Hi everyone, welcome to VLSI Explore with Raman. Today let's discuss the PCI Gen 6 introduction. PCI Gen 6 is the high data rate compared to the previous generations Gen 5 and Gen 3. It is high speed data rate compared to the previous generations. That is used for GTS. Before understanding the features of the Gen 6, let's understand the previous generations what is the data rate and what type of the encoding they are using and what is the modulation scheme they are using, let's discuss now. PC Express start with the Gen 1. Data rate is 2.5 GTS. Encoding is 8B, 10B. And the modulation scheme is non return to 0. It has two levels, 0, 1. Generation 2, data rate is 5 GTS. Encoding is 8B, 10B. Modulation scheme is non return to 0. Gen 3, data rate is 8 GTS. Encoding is 128B, 130 encoding. For every 8 bits of data, we have to be append 2 extra bits for the encoding. It will affect the efficiency. Correct? Actual data only 8 bit, but you are appending the 8 bits here. It will affect the efficiency. Why you have to append these two extra bits to maintain the DC balance, to recover the clock, to detect the errors. That's why they had adding the two extra bits in the encoding. Gen 5, the data rate is 32. GTS. Encoding is 128B, 130 encoding. Gen 6 data rate is 64 GTS. The modulation scheme is pulse amplitude modulation with four levels. If you compare the clock frequency, Gen 5, Gen 6 both are same. Then how the Data rate is increased without increasing the frequency through this pulse amplitude modulation. Previous generations, each clock cycle, you can able to transmit one bit of information. In Gen 6, you can able to transmit two bits within one clock cycle using the pulse amplitude modulation. There is a possibility to increase the frequency for me uh, to achieve the data rate is more compared to previous generations. If you increase the frequency, what will happen? The channel loss will increase. The distance between the symbols will reduce. It will affect the overlap. All the symbols will overlap. Receivers are unable to predict the data if the symbols will overlap. That's why Without increasing the frequency, you can able to double the data rate by using pulse amplitude modulation with four levels. Previous generations, only one bit of information you can transmit within one clock cycle. But Gen 6, you can able to transmit two bits of information within a one clock cycle. Pulse amplitude modulation signaling. It has four levels. Pulse amplitude modulation is more prone to errors compared to non return to zero. Non return to zero, the voltage level is more. In the pulse amplitude modulation, the voltage amplitude level is less, which has it is a low voltage. If the voltage is less, it is more prone to errors. Pulse amplitude modulation is more prone to errors. How you can mitigate these errors? By using forward error correction. It will reduce the bit error rate. Pulse amplitude modulation is more prone to error. That's why they had introduced the forward error correction. Let's consider we are not introduced this forward error correction. Just introduce the pulse amplitude modulation. Then what will happen? 
ట్రాన్స్మిటర్ సెండ్ చేయడం అండి డేటా రిసీవర్ ఈజ్ రిసీవ్డ్ ద డేటా అట్ ద టైమ్ రిసీవర్ హ్యావ్ సమ్ ఎర్రర్స్ విచ్ హాస్ ఇట్ రిసీవ్ ద డేటా విత్ రెస్పెక్ట్ టు సమ్ ఎర్రర్స్ దెన్ రిసీవర్ విల్ సెండ్ ద నాక్ డిఎల్పి ఇఫ్ ద నాక్ డిఎల్పి ఇస్ రిసీవ్డ్ బై ద ట్రాన్స్మిటర్ ఇట్ విల్ అగైన్ రీప్లే ద రిక్వెస్ట్ ఇట్ విల్ ఎఫెక్ట్ ద లేటెన్స్ హియర్ again the transmitter is sending the request to mitigate this one forward error correction helpful it will before passing that uh, crc block data forward error correction will connect some of the bits in our data the forward correction can be helpful when if the introducing the pulse amplitude modulation it will mitigating the errors if you wanted to use this forward error correction algorithm what you have to do the packet the packet format is fixed type that's why gen6 introduced the fleet mode where the packets are organized in flow control units of fixed sizes in fleet mode there is no need of the framing tokens which is start of the transaction layer packet start of the data link layer packet and eds edb framing tokens are not required in fleet mode the high it will provide the higher bandwidth efficiency under lower latency how it will provide the higher bandwidth efficiency the using 1b 1b encoding and also they remove the framing tokens you have to transmit only our uh, actual data itself no need to append any extra bits for the actual data previous generations they are pending two extra bits the gen 1 gen 2 for every 8 bits in the gen 3 onwards they have appended two extra bits for every 128 bits but for the gen 6 no need append the extra bits you can able to transmit the actual bit it is a 1b 1b encoding only other switches are lop mode lop mode is needed if you wanted to save the power less consider your device don't have to transmit the data it has less amount of data at that time you have to be reduce the power you have to be make sure you have to be decrease the some length uh, you have to downsize the lens here how you can downsize by entering the lop mode Previous generations, there are some low power modes are there, L0, L0S, L1, L2. LOP mode is not there for the previous generations. LOP mode can be downsized the link here. Previous generations, L0S, if there is no packets are there transmit, then transmitter or receiver directly enter the L0S state. But for LOP mode, both devices need to be agree some set of lanes here then both components can be enter they have to be action the link management dlps in the gen6 they had introduced the gray coding pre coding already there for the gen5 and gen6 also there the control skip character the length is 40 bytes in gen6 they had introduced the one training sequence which is a tier 0 they had introduced this is the fleet size 256 bytes of the fleet it contains the 236 bytes for the tlp 6 bytes for the dlp 8 bytes for the crc 6 bytes for the forward error correction within the 236 bytes of that uh, tlp you can accommodate more number of tlp request this is fleet header fleet header previous generations they have format but fleet header don't have any format only type only there they introduce orthogonal header content it is one type of the extra information it will provide the destination segment and the passive values 
last two byte enable, first two byte enable. Destination segment can be useful if you have a multi processor environment. If multi processor environment will be there, at that time you, have, you needed multi, multi root complexes. If you wanted to send the data from one segment to another segment, at that time you have to identify the segment name, what the segment name are. Through orthogonal header content, we can notify what the segment name are. Tyler says. Tyler says means it will decide whether ECNRC present or not. Previous generations, TLP days will decide whether ECRC present or not. But Gen 6, there is Tyler says it will decide ECRC or not. That a header content. Tag. Tag is 14 bit size. Previous generations, tag is 10 bit field. But for the Gen 6, it is 14 bit field. You can able to transmit multiple outstanding transactions compared to previous generations. It has a more width. Symbol placement in class 4 link with 1B, 1B encoding. Have 4 links, have to transmit the data. For every clock cycle, I will transmit 2 bits of the information. See, this unit interval, uh, 0 unit interval starting of that uh, clock cycle, I am transmitting 2 symbols, which are 2 bits here. 2 bits of the data, I am transmitting within a 1 clock cycle. In the next clock cycle, I am again transmitting the 2 bits. Symbol means it has a 8 bit. 1 byte. How to be distribute the data? You have to distribute the, all the lengths by using the byte typing. DLP data link packet. It has a 6 bytes of the sequence. First two bytes are dedicated to fleet level, AC or NAC and rate ray. It contains the DLP payload. It has sequence number, replay command, type of the DLP payload, prior fleet pass payload, fleet users. Fleet user decide it is whether it is idle fleet or no fleet or payload fleet. DLP fleet will not store inside the physical layer, which means it don't have any data buffers. The DLP fleet it just to pass to that uh, receiving side. It will not store inside the physical layer. Only TLP fleet only store inside the data buffers. It has a six bytes. It contains the DLP payload, sequence number, replay command, types of the DLP payload, pre-pass payload, fleet use. These are the fields. This is transmit side of the Cisword GTS. CRC generation. It is passing the data to the uh, forward error correction generation block. Then again, this output of the forward error correction block is giving to input of the scrambler. Scrambler output is passing to the gray coding. Gray coding output is passing to the gray co pre coding here. Then after that, this is the pulse amplitude modulation. Finally, it will pass the data to pulse amplitude modulation. What is the purpose of the scrambling? Scrambling can be helpful if you, there is a, some repetitive pattern in your uh, bit of the sim. The repetitive pattern will be there, then at a certain point of time, the energy spike will more. It will affect the electromagnetic interference. That's why if you wanted to eliminate the repetitive patterns in your bit stream, you have to be do scrambling. All the data bits will scramble. All the data sets will not scramble. Some of the data sets only scramble. Here you can see, let's consider, we have no need of the scrambling. At the time, you can bypass the scrambling. Okay, some data set will not scramble. Na? That's why there is separate for, for the bypassing the scrambling. 
This is the transmitter logic. This all the operation can be inside the data link layer itself. Sorry, this is inside the physical layer. For the previous generations, this CRC generation and forward error correction, it is that error correction which has a LCRC generation and sequence number inside the data link layer. But for the Gen 6, this CRC generation, forward error correction, inside the physical layer itself, it will generate. This is the transmitter logic. It has a scrambling, gray coding, pre coding, FAM4, and OCRC generation forward error correction. Yeah, this is the introduction of the PCI Gen 6. If you like the content, please share and subscribe.